I'm at Zishlui and Falozi National Park in South Africa, a place with such a variety of life seldom found elsewhere in the world. Today we're going to focus on one specific species, the painted dog, Lycaon pictus. We're going to take a look at other species that also call this magnificent place home. Zishlui and Falozi National Park is a 960 square kilometer fenced nature reserve situated in the KwaZulu Natal and run by Ezemvelo KZN Wildlife. The landscape consists mainly of hilly bush terrain, but with varying degrees of density. This land is famous for a variety of wonderful wildlife, especially its predators, like the lion, hyena, cheetah, and leopard. But less people know of its most successful large hunters, the African wild dog. The park's recent history with the wild or painted dog started when the animals were first reintroduced to the park in 1981. These individuals were bred from animals in zoos and then slowly eased into a life in the wild. Unfortunately, by 2015, the dog's population had fluctuated drastically between 3 and 30 individuals. But, early in 2022, six new dogs were brought into the park. Four males and two females. Up to 80% of these animals' hunts end in success, which is incredible when you compare them to a lion's measly 30. While both species work in a team, the dogs often utilize greater numbers than their endurance. Packs will chase and harass animals down until it literally collapses from exhaustion and can do little to fight back. At which point the dogs tear in, killing it via blood loss and shock. Targeted prey species usually fall anywhere between 15 and 200 kilograms in weight. The most common prey for our dogs on the reserve is impala, wildebeest and other antelope but they will also readily consume smaller animals like hare should they come across any. In other parts of Africa, they have been reported taking down animals as large as 289 kilograms. Not only are these Africa's most successful apex predator, but they are also its rarest and most fragmented, with populations being dotted around sporadically throughout the continent. Because of this, it's now up to humans to aid in the translocation of these animals in order to avoid inbreeding and hopefully increase their numbers. Painted dogs have a myriad of names, including African Wild Dog, Cape Hunting Dog, Painted Hunting Dog, Painted Lycaon, and Painted Wolf. These are all English names, however. The indigenous people that have lived alongside these animals all have their own names, too. But to the local Zulu, it is known as the Inkenshane. Due to the name Wild Dog, there have been many negative views on the animal. Some even used to think they were just feral domestic dogs, and thus culled them with reckless abandon. The dogs we are currently following are the Sasaneni pack, who live here on the reserve. But obviously they are not the only animals here. So let's take a look at some of the other animals that call this amazing reserve home. So this is an adult leopard tortoise, absolutely beautiful animal. You can see why it gets its name, because it has this speckled yellow coloration. And one thing to tell the difference between a male and a female tortoise, there are actually many tells. Uh, the best one for a male is if it's plastrum, the underside of its carapace is bowl shaped so it can slot over the female. Another is if you're looking at the, the back legs, the claws, these things here, are usually longer on a female so they can dig holes. And I believe this one might be an adult female. Infelozi is home to both African species of rhinoceros, the black and white. Neither have any real predators as adults due to their great size, thick hide, and willingness to put up a fight. Although smaller, the black rhinoceros has a much more aggressive nature and more likely to attack nuisances like dogs, humans, or even lions should they get too close. Unfortunately, due to the trade in their horns, all species of rhino around the world are endangered. The claim is that their horn carries medicinal value, 
though extensive research has proven without a doubt that this is false. It is made out of keratin, the exact same protein as our fingernails and hair, making every death all the more upsetting. So these are two extremely rare black rhinos. Now they have an interesting history on how they got their name because no rhinos in the world are actually black or white or varying shades of grey and brown. So, uh, when Dutch explorers first found white rhinos, they were actually saying wide rhinos when they were explaining it to the English. The English heard white instead of white because white rhinos graze with their wide lips makes it easier. Whereas black rhinos like these, their brow browsers. So, uh, when uh, the English found a different type of rhino, they decided we have a white one, why not name this one Black Rhino instead? Beautiful. Impala make up the majority of predators' diets here at Inflozi, making them a very important species, a keystone, if you will. There are three typical social dynamics displayed for group living in Pala. Either a group of just females, a group of just males, or a herd consisting of one territorial dominant male that looks over his harem of females. Though it's not uncommon to see other species mixing with these groups, wildebeest, warthog, nyala, and other species of gazelle will utilize the impala's great numbers and watchful nature, whilst offering their own strengths, such as a better sense of smell, to overall protect the entire herd from predators. So behind me, we're a small herd of impala. Impala actually make up a lot of the prey base for a lot of the predators here. Um, they breed very, very readily, and right now they are lambing. So, might not be able to see any yet, but when they lamb, it actually makes it a lot easier for animals like wild dogs to feed themselves, and a lot of them will coincide having their own babies when these guys are having theirs. Easier to eat, easy to feed more mouths. Always not too far away from the Impala, warthogs like to root around in the undergrowth, dining on a varied diet of insects, vegetation, fruits and seeds, fungi, eggs and even carrion should the opportunity arise. Though they're quite capable of digging their own, they often live in abandoned aardvark burrows, entering back end first, so if the painted dogs or any other predator come along looking for some bush bacon, they'll be confronted by a face full of tusks. Got a sounder of warthogs that are gradually leaving us. But they're really cool because you can tell males and females by their face. Males have good big tusks, whereas females have beards that kind of look like tusks. Kind of possibly intimidation, but you can see all the little hoglets in the distance there. Very cute. Although poaching for ivory wreaks havoc on elephants around the world, the Infolosi elephants are doing very well and were one of the most common animals we got to see on the trip. So numerous, in fact, that we accidentally found ourselves in their midst multiple times. This bull in must is one of the most dangerous animals in Africa. A thrilling encounter, but intimidating all the same. Weighing more than the average T-Rex would have, these animals are not to be trifled with. Though not flush with testosterone like the males, these herds of females and their calves can be just as dangerous, so the best thing to do is to remain quiet, not act as a threat, and wait for them to pass us by. So we're down here by one of the many ponds they have in the reserve, and we're joined by a family of elephants. And obviously when it starts getting really hot, these guys don't have the luxury of sweating like we do, at least to the same extent, so cover themselves in mud and water, helps cool them off for an extended period of time and block direct sunlight. Much to the chagrin of many of the turtles living in this place. Well, for now, looks like there's plenty of water to go around, because they're not just these guys here, but also zebra, just over yonder. The cheetah is an interesting animal indeed, not just the fastest land animal on earth. Having non-retractable claws, unlike the rest of their clade, these cats' closest living relatives are the jagirundi 
and the puma, both found across the Atlantic Ocean in the Americas. And until recently, the Americas had their own cheetah species within the same lineage that only went extinct 12,000 years ago. After multiple days of looking for many of the collared cheetah, we were finally treated to a wonderful surprise. A mother and her five cubs. This mother is doing a wonderful job keeping her babies well-fed and away from the other predators, choosing to live at one of the far corners of the park, well away from many of the larger predators' territories. At Infolozi, the dogs don't tend to protect on zebra due to their size and their willingness to fight back, but packs living in the Serengeti have made the plain zebra part of their regular diet, so it's not entirely out of the question. The pups here are just testing the waters to see what they're able to get away with. No real hunting is taking place. It's a good thing too, as this mother will defend her calf with righteous fury if pushed too far. So obviously, these are unicorns. <laughs> so, zebra are really, really cool animals. They're in the same genus as horses and donkeys, slightly more closely related to donkeys than horses. And obviously, their most famous trait is their stripes. Now the reason these animals have stripes is contested, but it's believed it helps confuse predators because when they're in a herd, it's hard for an animal like a lion to decide where one animal starts and the other ends. A study done in recent years believes it also confuses mosquitoes. And when they painted animals like cows to a similar shape, it actually decreased the amount of mosquitoes landing on those animals. So there's a, a lot of credit that goes into that. With canines as long as a lion's, these primates are formidable. So it's always best to not draw the attention of the dominant male by looking him in the eyes. Though if you do, the baboons here at Infolozi are much more likely to run. It may surprise many people to hear that adult male baboons are of similar or even greater size to a painted dog. Despite this fact, in some places like Zimbabwe, they have been made a large staple of their diet, as much as 44% of their kills being made up of chamkas. Though perhaps here, with its abundance of impala and treetop escape routes, the dogs are less inclined to even try. Unlike baboons that have a more resilient stomach, their smaller cousins, the vervet monkeys, can be followed in cases of emergency to find food, as anything they are seen eating should be edible by humans as well. Though, you may be unwilling to try. Vultures are some of the most important animals to any ecosystems they inhabit. Their penchant for consuming even rotten meat helps limit the spread of disease through the area. They're able to avoid botulism and many other ailments that otherwise kill a human due to their incredibly powerful stomach acid. In some species like the Lamagaya, this acid can even digest bone. Unfortunately, these white bag vultures are critically endangered thanks to local humans poisoning carcasses, usually in an attempt to kill scavenging predators. There are a miraculous assortment of birds found here in Infolozi, from the tireless village weavers making their hanging nests above the bodies of water, the beautiful secretary bird that scours the grass for unlucky snakes, to the great ground hornbill with its scarlet striking red throat and haunting call that echoes across the bush. <laughs> Got a herd of buffalo here, Cape Buffalo. One of the most dangerous animals in Africa. You can see they've got a good eye on us right now. It's a mixed herd of males and females, but I was just told that the most dominant bull will usually be the biggest. And they're all quite big, so it's hard to pinpoint which one that is from here. One thing's for sure, I'm not getting out of this vehicle, because I do not have a death wish. Weighing upwards of 1,000 kilograms and getting up to 5 meters tall, giraffes find themselves on very few animals' menu. The wild dogs may chance an attack on a newborn calf, but a single kick from mum's giant legs could easily cripple or even kill them, 
so even that is very rare. Being the tallest animal in the world brings unique dangers. While at the reserve, I learned that it's not entirely uncommon for giraffe to be struck by lightning. What's even more interesting is that the resulting carcass doesn't get scavenged by many animals except vultures. It seems our dogs would prefer their meat blue rare. So obviously, these are giraffe, the tallest animal in the world, and a lot of that height is in their neck. Now, although it's a very, very long neck, it has the exact same number of vertebral columns as we do in ours. They're just elongated because they evolved to reach higher into the trees. But it's not the only adaptation that they have for that. So if you ever get the chance to look inside a giraffe's mouth or see them whilst they're feeding, they have an extra long tongue, about as long as my forearm, for gripping the branches, stripping the leaves off of even thorny trees. And when you see that tongue, it's also a very dark colour that helps prevent sunburn when they're feeding in the hot African sun. Down by the river, where the elephants like to take their daily baths, lying in wait just under the surface, is the world's second largest reptile. Weighing up to 750 kilograms and reaching lengths of 4.2 meters for large adult males, this is by far the largest predator at the reserve. Their jaws are so strong, they can literally crush a wildebeest skull with little effort. Body armor made up of literal tiny bones called osteoderms run the length of their back. Being one of the few animals capable of taking down an adult lion, it's best our dogs, and anything smaller than a hippo, drink from one of the many ponds instead. So these are members of the Sassanini pack. The pack we are focusing on here in this video. Um, there are 16 members in total. You can see some more over here. Uh, eight of those are pups. You can see these pups are quite small, very young. Very, very curious. These are the most successful apex predators in Africa. They succeed in 70 to 80 percent of the hunts they go on as opposed to a lion's 20 to 30 percent success rate. And because of that, they're often sought after by other predators who try and steal their kills. But if they stick in large numbers, they get to keep their food. Perhaps the most dangerous animal in the park for our dogs to come in contact with, bar a hungry crocodile hiding in the river, are lions. Almost 10 times larger than an individual dog, these impressive cats will go out of their way to kill any competitor if given the chance. Though when they do, they rarely ever eat them, as is the typical case with apex predators. It's not entirely one-sided though. Painted dogs will opportunistically kill wounded or elderly lions and can fight off lone lions attacking their packmates. There is a pride of lions within the park consisting of over 30 members which dwarfs the Sassaneni pack. But luckily for our dogs, they tend to stick to the more southerly part of the park, well away from the dog's territory. So these guys, these are blue wildebeest or brindled gnus. Now, there are a lot more dangerous than impala in terms of prey source for our dogs. Um, but they're a very interesting species. So the males tend to be a lot more solitary than the females, but Whenever they do group up, sometimes they uh, group up with other species like zebra and our impala. This makes their uh, shortcomings, such as their poor eyesight, better because they have the other animals looking out for them and they have much better hearing than a lot of the other species here. So it's a mutualistic relationship that helps them survive in such a predator dense area. Easily the stealthiest of Africa's big five, Leopards are grace incarnate. They are also the most widespread big cat in the world, being found throughout Africa and Asia. Some have even adapted to living in close proximity to men, going unseen like ghosts in the night. They are such accomplished hunters that elsewhere in Africa they can even take down adult gorillas. In this reserve, they tend to stick to the bountiful ungulates on offer, but won't pass up an opportunity to ambush a baboon. This is a very cool scorpion, you can tell. 
because he is poised and ready to sting. But his stinger is small. His claws are big. This is an indicator that it is pretty safe to pick up. Still, it would be like a wasp sting, so best avoided by holding the stinger. I will not harass this little one for too long, as I will release them. They're in my room, that's why they've been moved. Often thought of as just a scavenger that lives in the shadows of greater predators like lions, this couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, they hunt more successfully than lions with a success rate of 74%, which is almost as effective as the painted dog. What truly sets them apart from other mammalian predators here is that they are able to consume almost every part of their prey. The jaws of a spotted hyena are the most powerful of any of these mammalian predators, able to literally crush bone into more edible chunks, allowing them to utilize skeletons left by our dogs or other animals as a source of food in times of crisis. I hope you enjoyed this video on the wonderful wildlife of Ishlui and Falozi. Special thanks to my fellow volunteers, Kirthani and Simeon, for not only their tolerance of my antics, but their help in filming this. As well as the amazing conservation group, Wildlife Act, who not only hosted us and allowed us to take part in vital conservation work, but whose guides were a well of knowledge in understanding the bush and its wildlife, and kindly answered all of my annoying questions. If you want to find out more about Wildlife Act, follow the link in the description. Maybe you yourself can go visit the dogs at Infolozi, or the many other amazing animals at their sites all across South Africa. Until next time, this has been Scott, and you've been amazing. Thanks for watching.